JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 19th. I am Harlan Bospisuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our uh, disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against uh, the other major currencies on Monday during the Asian session on Tuesday. It gained more than 1% against the Japanese yen and a lot less against uh, the euro, the pound and the Swiss franc. The greenback underperformed versus the Canadian dollar, the Aussie and the Kiwi. Now, the tumble of the Japanese yen combined with the strength of the risk-linked currencies, Luni, Aussie and Kiwi, suggests that market participants may have decided to add to their risk exposure sometime yesterday or during the Asian session today. Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that Wall Street slid fractionally, but appetite improved somehow today in Asia. Among the indices under our radar, Japan's Nikkei 225 and South Korea's KOSPI gained, but China Shanghai, uh, Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng fell, with the latter losing more than 2.5%, perhaps due to a slump in big tech firms listed in the index amid China's latest regulatory crackdown on, uh, on the sector. Now, most European bourses uh, were closed due to the Easter Monday holiday and Wall Street stayed pressured, perhaps due to the overly hoggish expectations around the Fed's future course of action, even uh, after the Bank of America's, uh, if, if, even after the Bank of America's uh, positive earnings. We get uh, more earnings uh, throughout the rest of the week, with firms including uh, Netflix, Tesla and Johnson & Johnson. Netflix reports today ahead of, um, of the US Open. Now, in, uh, in our view, better earnings results suggest better economic performance, but at this point in time, better economic performance makes the light greener for Fed policymakers to proceed with aggressive tightening in order to curb a very high inflation. Thus, we see it hard for Wall Street to reverse north uh, at the moment and climb to new record highs. We still believe that the path of least resistance uh, is to the downside. After all, the greenback has been standing tall uh, as uh, treasury yields uh, keep rising exact, exactly due to those expectations. We will examine, uh, we will re-examine that view and start reconsidering it in case uh, the FOMC or any individual member provides information that uh, disappoints. We stick to our guns that the best currency against which uh, someone can exploit uh, dollar gains is the Japanese yen and this is because the, of the divergence in monetary policy um, between the Bank of Japan and the Fed. The Bank of, uh, the, the Bank of Japan appears willing to maintain an ultra-loose uh, monetary policy, so the divergence between that bank and other major central banks, especially the Fed, is widening fast. So we do see decent chances for the dollar yen pair to test the round figure of 130 soon. And we reach to the conclusion that the yen could continue weakening even if risk appetite is subdued, even if equities are uh, trading south. In other words, nowadays we see the correlation between the negative correlation between, uh, let's say the negative strong correlation between the yen and uh, equities to be weakening and coming back uh, and to, to be weakening. For example, we have equities sliding and again uh, weakening. Actually, it may have turned, the negative correlation may have turned into somehow a positive one. 
So that's it uh, uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events uh, much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, bye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.